Hi everyone, tell me if I'm not loud enough. I hope I am. <laughs> so, my name is Natalia Strokova. I'm originally from Moscow, Russia, and I've been living in Austria and Salzburg for like 10 months now. Uh, I used to work with Yandex, I hope, like most of the people know, this is the major competitor to Google in Russia. Um, did some work connected to the search engine, which was really interesting for me for six years now, and decided to move to the European Union. And now I work for a company called NCM.AT. We do software for hotel businesses, websites, and like um, booking solutions. So what I would like to tell you about is how to connect, say, Docker with Dancer. Who has heard about Docker? Alright, who has used Docker? Not that many people. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, well, so the theme to me is honest, honestly, this is new to me as well, but the point is, it's really simple. Um, so I'll just try to show you in a few steps how you can get the system up and running because um, Docker is a wonderful tool for us to. Um, popularized Perl, which may seem strange uh, at the moment, but I'll explain. I mean, why? Um, let's go through. Um, so Docker is widespread since everybody knows about it. It's widespread and growing, even though yesterday we have heard that it might be dying, but I think not. It's, it's growing. It's useful for many cases and many solutions, and um, it's open and free. Everybody can have access for it. And it's, um, the Docker containers are lightweight. This is much easier and um, better than creating virtual machines. So yeah, as, as I've already said, it's easy to get started with. Um, there are tons of wonderfully written documentation online. Um, so the Docker containers, they are based on your on the operating system for Linux, and the, um, the containers are all separate. And this makes you able, like, gives you more freedom. It makes makes you able to get your system up and running on any environment, um, on any major OS. You can install Docker on Mac, Windows, even <laughs> yeah, Unix, Linux, and it gives you a virtual machine called Docker Machine. And under this machine, all the containers are on top of the OS, and uh, every single one um, is independent, so you can get your software up and running, and you can use basically whatever you want, uh, with any, say, environment variables, um, and uh, they won't mix in with any other processes or the systems together. Um, and speaking about Perl popularization. So the issue is, um, we used to be, like Perl used to be popular when everyone had CGI, and all the major providers had CGI, so you could just, um, uh, you could set up websites pretty easily, but then everybody <coughs> had to have a PHP, and you could basically copy some weird form or website, just via FTP somewhere, and that's the kind of change the, uh, everything for us. But now, you can have a Docker container and setting it up is like a couple of steps and then you can have pretty much anything you want inside, including Perl. So yeah, and you can use it to ship um, your solutions to external users and you could also use it internally for say development and testing. That is what we do. Um, we use it not only with Dancer, we use it mostly actually with uh, our older code that uses non curl But yeah, with Dancer it's also simple. And so what we need to do is first of all, install Docker. I've done this like three times, four times on Mac on my own system, and once on CentOS, um, Unix based. Um, it's really easy if you follow the steps in doc, uh, docsoccer.com which looks like this for example on that. I hope yeah, this, the font is big enough. Um, so we basically just download like any application, get an installation dialog 
And what you download is a Docker toolkit. And what you receive is a Docker, Docker machine. So this command creates for you a virtual machine under which every, every container is going to be running. So it's like easy to use. The commands are what we're used to. Like LS shows you um, all the machines that you've got. But default, after installation, you've got one virtual machine called default. You normally don't really need more. And to start using it, to start using Docker, you have to check out how the default machine is configured. You need the IP address on it. So what you can do is, first of all, check the status if it's running. If it's not running, start it. Or you can do restart or stop. Um, if you want to stop it, say end. And if you want to start using the Docker command to use containers, you gotta um, check out the configuration and the environment variables. So, um, so you need to evaluate Docker machine environment. Uh, the command you don't even have to remember this one. Um, it just excuse me. Uh, it comes when you. Uh, examine this, uh, the Docker machine default, and after that you can use the Docker uh, command. So after that you can just check, say, Docker space something. Um, I could actually visualize this a little bit, so that's interactive. Um, is this visible? Is that big enough? Okay. Yeah, you can basically use all the containers you can 
find them and help them out. It's easy to use as well. They have search, they have whatever you need. And um, they actually have an image for Dancer already. I think it's called Peter Martini Docker Dancer. You can Google it up or yeah, check right now. Um, and you can actually base your image on that image so that you don't even have to install Docker. So if you want to have your own container, well, prepare your own files, whatever, um, whichever way you store them, say git, get git URL, and then if you want to create your own container, make a directory, and what you basically need is a Docker file. The Docker file explains to Docker what it needs to use to create your image for you. Say, I didn't really like the official dancer image, so I just started out from Perl. Um, so the first line of this Docker file means that I'm basing my image on the latest image of Perl. So the latest tag moves as the new images arrive. So I think right now it's like 520. Um, yeah, if you don't want to use that, you can just slash the specified version. Or say, start from the dancer image. So it's got to be a maintainer, which is in my case me. And then you use all the commands that you need to for installation of all the modules that you need, say. Like, what I did, this is just a very basic version of Dancer. I didn't do anything to it. So we basically installed Dancer, first of all. And then um, I installed Starman as well, so that it runs Dancer for me. Um, the third line with the run on it needs a little more explanation. So obviously git clone is what um, I clone all my files from. But the no catch thing is um, a little tweak. Um, there is no issue about it, and well, it's been raised like I don't know here a couple of years ago, but they refused to fix it. The thing is, when you change uh, when you change Docker file, um, Docker has a catch. So if you want to rebuild an image, and if you change a Docker file. If you do not change the line, it doesn't get um, uh, used. It, I mean, it doesn't get um, it. It slowed it from the cache. So, if for example, if something changed in my GitHub account, if I, if I push something, and if I didn't have a no cache where I will just git clone or anything, it will not pull again from GitHub if I change anything. So you can basically just change anything on that line, then it does not get pulled from cache, and then get uh, the code gets cloned, um, pulled again from GitHub. So the next line is basically, I use port 5000. This makes the port visible from outside. Um, then we just change directory into where my code is stored, and then just CMD is just a command. Um, get the starman up and running. So yeah, with with the port. So this has to be like pretty straightforward. Um, then when you have the stopper file, save it up, and then you have to build your image from it. So my C parameter is from <laughs> for the name, and dot is the directory where the Docker file lies. So if I'm in it. And once it's built successfully, you get like a listing, built successfully and everything, um, you can run it. So you can say, you can, you can specify a name, minus minus name. Um, the flags minus i and t are used together to um, <clears throat> use the console after that if you want to. Um, minus minus rm is the work of the container, I can talk about it later, after it exits. Um, minus p is the port binding. Um, there is this option that if, for example, in the container you use port 5000, maybe outside this port is already taken, so you would like to specify your own port. So you just do like minus p, your port, and then um, the port that is in the in my case, it just use the same one. And then just the name for it. 
Um, <clears throat> so I will demonstrate. This is how we've tested. Um, I've already showed um, how to work like environment looks like. So we need the IP address, which I've already copied. So if we go here again, this is the IP address. Go here. This IP address, 45,000, Alice Hansen. The only thing I changed is like three exclamation marks. It's up and running right now. We can see that um, if we do say, um, Dr. P, Dr. P S, there are two containers right now running. Um, the second one is what I have just demonstrated. Or it's 5,000, converted to 5,000. Um, and the first one is what I just played around with. Excuse me, how much time have I still got? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Um, there was one thing that I wanted to demonstrate. I had issues with it, but I fixed it. I wanted to show how you can use volumes. So <coughs> basically, when you put all your stuff in a container, you don't really have access to it. I mean, you actually do, but the, the point of it is that you shouldn't. Unless you're using it as like a development or a testing environment, which was our case. Yes. Um, so if you ship it to other users, you don't need it. But if you want to um, change your code, run the Starman again, um, play around with it, um, then you need to have access to it. And what you can do is use volumes. So, let's try this. <clears throat> um, so we have tested. This works. Um, so volumes. Um, what we can do is the flag minus V, which accepts like say two parts. First part is the, the directory that I have my files at at my local machine, I'm a Mac in my case. And then you have the directory that's going to be bound to that. So in the container you're going to have just slash data and everything that's in the home directory that I have is going to be in there. So I mean this is exactly the same thing. If I change anything uh, from my Mac, or if I change anything in the container, I can see it from the other bit. So, say, do a last data in the container, you can see a file test, echo a word into it, and then from a MacBook, I do a cat test, and I see the word change, and it works the other end. So, I can basically work on the files that I have in my container. I can do um, Docker exec and receive a bash into my container. After that, I can say start Starman in you. And if I'm developing, I can just um, yeah work my local machine or whatever way you prefer, and then see it in the container in the port that I specified. The issue that I had, I have not yet figured out until the end, but. Like, if you want to do this, um, there is a slight difference in the Docker files that I've used. So, um, there is this Docker file that I've used for playing with volumes. I do not import anything from Git right now and just do this. Like, Starman work directory is data, data where I found everything, and then I just do Starman with another port. So the issue is, if you want to use this, if you mount it as a data, uh, I mean, um, as a volume with minus two flag, um, you do not do, um, when you do docker run, you can't use bash straight away. I don't yet understand why it doesn't work, but you can just run the container. After that, you can do exec, get the bash of it, and then we can see Starman is working, just as I specified in my Docker file. 
So, for example, let's see. Um, I am in, this is my local machine, and um, this is where I store all my paths that I have just mounted as a volume. So I can just change anything in it. Say, Carl is dancing. I've just written like a smiling face in it. So let's save it up. And we can see in here. There we have our smiley face. This is a container. Again, the IP address, the new port that I've just specified in my other Docker file, and there we go. So if you want to obviously change anything in the code and just in the template, you've got to restart Starman or whichever um, thing you use, and there you go. So back to the presentation.